Okay, and welcome to another Cool Dude Clems Electronic Workshop. And today we're going to do something boring, but I don't know what we're going to do. Okay, yeah, I do know what we're going to do, and I'm going to stop speaking like that. But first, first of all, before we start the electronics, I would just like to say thank you to the few of you who commented in with suggestions on how to get this computer working again, or more specifically, the problems I was having with the hard drive. So now, I can continue on with doing the Star Kids episode 7, I think it is. I was really worried, I thought, you know, I lost everything, and that was... You know, I'd have to do it all over again. But yeah, so again, thanks. So, now, I've got no worries. So, as you can see here, I'm starting work on episode 7. Let's just have a little sneak preview of it. I've got his lines now, so I can do that part. But yeah, like, like I was saying, this is a work in progress, so it's still going to be uh, a couple of months or so until this is done. Provided that I work hell for leather on this thing. Okay, so you may remember, in a previous video I did, had all that noise problem with the computer, and one of you suggested that I should power the different things on different power supplies, not having it all run off the computer's CPU. So, that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to make a power supply that comes on when the computer comes on and it provides separate isolated supplies for the USB audio thing, my amplifier's mixer and the amplifier's power amplifier. And I think this way, having it all isolated from one another like this is going to solve all of those problems. The thing that is going to be a little bit difficult is finding the right kind of transformer. Because I need to find a transformer, I need to find a good transformer that can provide 9 volts and two sets of 15 volts. So this one is going to be regulated to 12 volts, and also this one is going to be regulated to 12 volts, and this one is going to be regulated to 5 volts. I have a whole boatload here of different transformers I could try. These are just some of them. These are every transformer I have. I really want to use this one because this one looks the nicest and also it's got brackets on it so I can mount it onto something. But I don't know the output voltages of these transformers. It may turn out that I might need to modify a transformer. Hope it doesn't come to that, but if that's what it comes to, that's what it comes to. Okay, so I've got a transformer here ready for testing. Faulty meter ready. And as usual, the camera's having a terrible job seeing the screen. So I'm just going to put mains into the Gazinta and see what comes out of the gazeltas. Well, let's measure some voltages. Okay, it looks like we've got a um, center tap winding, and it looks like the center tap is right here, judging by where the wires are coming out. So I'm just gonna put a clip on there. Let's see what voltage we've got coming out of this. I want something between 12 and 15 volts. So let's see what we got here. 12.8. 8 volts, well that's uh, that's a good start, let's see what we got on this winding 12.8 volts as well uh, let's see what we got on this little winding, it's probably going to be something small like maybe 5 or 9 volts, something like that, let's just see what we've got here wait what was that, 33 volts 
Well, that's way out. I don't want to... I'm not going to be able to do anything with that. Let's see what we got on this final winding. It looks like this is where they... Um, it looks like this is where that connects. We got... Hmm, only 4.7 volts. Well, this would have been perfect if there was a 12 volt winding, another 12 volt winding, and a 5 volt winding, or rather a 9 volt winding, because I've got to take into consideration the voltage drop across the diodes when I rectify it. But sadly, it seems that this transformer is just not suitable. Alright, let's try another one. Okay, so I'm going to test this transformer. Now, it looks like I've got one winding here. Looks like I've got a center tap winding here. And I don't know what these wires go to, so, um, yeah. I'm just going to test for continuity to see which one of these wires goes to each coil. I think there might be two separate coils here, two separate windings, whatever you want to call them. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the meter onto continuity. The buzzer on. And let's see, I'm just going to put one of the clips onto that wire, the, the blue wire. And I'm just going to go around the other wires and see which ones have continuity. So, let's see. This is the orange. Okay, that one has continuity. Do any of these have continuity? That one doesn't. And that one doesn't. So, if I test between these two wires, we should have continuity. And here we do. Right then, let's see what voltages we get. I'm just going to put my meter on there. Make sure nothing is shorting out. Let's see what we get. Ah, now that's more like it. Getting 14 volts out of that winding, that's good. That's in the ballpark of what I want. Let's see what's coming out of this. That's also giving us 14 volts, that's good. Let's see what this winding does. Don't want to touch any of these just in case there's high voltage on any of these wires. 27 volts, well that's way out of what I need. And let's test this one. I believe the white wire is the center tap, so I'm just going to put that there. Let's see what we get here. This wire, we got 21 volts. This one, also 21 volts. So across here, we should have like 40 volts. 42 volts. Yeah. So this would have been perfect if, say, this wire was a 9 volt winding, but it ain't. I think I found a solution. Now, I got this little transformer here, but I don't know what the um, voltages are. I know one side is mains voltage, but I don't know what the other side is. Also, I don't know which side is the mains voltage and which side is the low voltage. So, I'm going to go along with my multimeter here, or rather my faulty meter. Because it doesn't measure current anymore. I've checked all the fuses in it and everything's fine, so... Something must have blown in there, but at least I can still measure resistance. So... I'm gonna measure the resistance across this coil. Let's see what we've got. Is the camera recording? Yes, it is. Alright, so we've got 466 ohms. So that's most probably the primary side. This one, what we got here, about 12 ohms. Okay then, so this side is the low voltage side, this side is the high voltage side. So what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to run this off 120 volts, and how I'm going to do that is off this transformer here. Because I believe this is the center tap for the primary, and if this is the center tap for the primary, I will get 120 volts out of that when I put 240 volts in here. Right, well, this is all set up now. So I'm going to plug this in and see what we get out of this transformer. Thought it'd be best to test it on 120 volts first. See what it gives us. 
and oh look at that 9.9 .9 volts that's right where I wanted it so yeah I think I have found the transformers that I'm going to use so we found the right AC AC converters and you might be wondering how this supply is going to come on when the computer turns on well I'm going to put a relay in line with the live coming into the transformer and this radio relay is going to be activated when the computer turns on so when the computer turns on it goes through this diode activates the relay coil so this diode here is just to protect the computer from any high voltage spikes that might occur when the relay turns off and this diode is just in case I plug it in the wrong way around that prevents this diode from getting fried and anything else getting damaged so gonna need some components gonna need capacitors voltage regulators and of course a boatload of diodes right well I think it's time to build this thing okay so the first part of the power supply is done so this top section is gonna power the amplifier you know the power amplifier and this one is going to power the mixer and this one is going to power the USB audio device so I'm going to test this and make sure it works just going to put me AC in here I'm going to use the 14 volt tap on the transformer and if we get DC out here we'll know the first part of the um, power supply is good and I'm also going to test this one and this one as well to make sure those two work so let's just use my vintage calculator here and see what kind of voltage we should expect so I'm going to be using the 14 volt tap on the transformer so multiply that by 1.41 okay now take into effect the voltage drop across the diodes which in this case will be about 1.2 volts so we should have about 18.5 volts we should have about 18.5 volts of course, I don't remember exactly what the voltage output of that transformer was, but let's test it anyway. So the transformer is on. Now I've got a little bulb in series with the output of the transformer. So just in case anything's shorted out, all that's going to happen is this bulb is going to come on. So let's see what we get out of our first stage. Okay. Oh, look at that. 18.4 volts. I was dead right. Right. Let's test this rectifier, or whatever you want to call it. Rectifier and smoother. I think that's a better word for it. These caps seem to have some residual charge in them. Let's see what this one gives us. Yep. About 18.4 volts. That's good. That's good. And I'm not seeing a negative on the meter, so we're not going to have any exploding capacitors. Let's test the third rectifier. If I can get the clip on there. Actually, I'm going to level with you. I tested these earlier, so that's why there's still a little bit of residual voltage in the capacitors. Let's connect this one up. And yeah, it's good. Okay, well I think it's about time to test the voltage regulators. And I thought, well, I've got half of a power supply cobbled together here, so might as well use that for the voltage supply, why not? So let's test these voltage regulators. This is the LM78, um, no, what was it now? 7812. Right, so I'm going to put my meters negative on the ground pin. And the ground from the power supply is also going to connect there. Oh, that is a terrible connection. That isn't even... That isn't even clamped onto the wire. Right. Because these were salvaged out of something, so... And I've had these laying around for a while, so I don't even know if they're going to still work. Alright, so the meter's connected to the output. Let's connect our voltage to the input. Hopefully it will work. Okay, yeah. So, 
so that one's working. Voltage is a little bit low, but that's working. I'll test this one, which doesn't have a metal back. So this is just going to power the mixer. That's, that's, gonna, that's not going to take up many amps. We're talking milliamps here. That one there makes sure no wires are shorting out against each other. And let's see what this one gives us. I'll just get that on there. Okay, that's a little bit higher, but that one's working. So this was a KIA7812. Now somewhere I've got a 5 volt regulator, it seems to have disappeared. I there it is. An AN7805. Now, I'm going to connect the meters negative to the case, because the case and the middle pin are connected together internally, so... That'll be easier to do, and there's less risk of shorting anything out. Let's see if I get that on there. Alright, let's provide a voltage and we should get 5 volts out. 4.98, well that's close enough. Wow. Well, here we are, this, this is the completed power supply circuit. Obviously I'm going to need to solder the wires onto the outputs. I haven't completely forgotten about that, but anyway... I think it's about time to power this up and make sure it works. Yeah, I think that maybe I should have put this part in the middle, but mm, what are you going to do? So I'm going to put in my transformer, and let's see if this gives us the volts we need. Okay, transformer's on. Let's test the first 12 volt output. Um, this might be a bit difficult because I haven't really left anywhere to connect the meter. Uh, so I'll just put it on there. Yeah, that'll work. Make sure this one is doing its thing. Uh, yeah, it should be right. Okay, we got 11.87 volts coming out of that one. So this one should give us about 12 volts. Okay, we've got 12.04 there. Yep, and there's our 5 volts. So we're good. So all that remains to do is put the wires on here and connect this up to the computer. And uh, I'm going to have an extended look for a better transformer. But this video is getting too long already, so yeah. That's all coming up in the next video, so until next time, goodbye.